Have you ever wondered how much our perception influences the way we create art? Perception. It's the lens through which we interpret the world around us, and it plays a pivotal role in the realm of art. Our perception shapes our artistic expressions and narratives, giving life to the blank canvas that awaits our creative touch. Let's consider this. Give 10 artists the same subject, perhaps a simple apple. The results will astound you. 10 different apples, each unique, each bearing the distinctive imprint of the artist who created it. One might focus on the vibrant red skin, another on the crisp texture, and yet another on the shadow it casts. Each artist perceives and interprets the apple in their own unique way, and that's the beauty of art. Perception goes beyond the physical attributes of an object. It delves into the realm of emotions and associations. A sunset, for instance, may evoke feelings of tranquility in one artist, while another might associate it with the melancholy of endings. These emotional responses, too, shape our artistic creations, adding depth and resonance to our work. Our perception also influences our choice of medium and technique. An artist who perceives the world in sharp, defined lines might lean towards graphic design or illustration. Another, who sees the world in a flurry of colors and emotions, might find their voice in abstract painting. The power of perception, therefore, is not limited to what we create, but also how we choose to express it. But here's the catch. Perception isn't static. It evolves and changes, influenced by our experiences, our emotions, and our growth as artists. This fluidity of perception allows for a dynamic evolution of our art, keeping it fresh and relevant. So, how do we harness the power of perception in our art? We start by acknowledging it, by understanding that our perception, unique and personal, is a powerful tool that shapes our artistic journey. By recognizing that our art is a reflection of how we perceive and interpret the world around us. Understanding that our perception is a powerful tool in art creation is the first step in becoming a more conscious artist. What if I told you that understanding colors can dramatically improve your artwork? Let's delve into the vibrant world of color theory. At its most basic, color theory is a framework that artists use to understand and utilize color to create harmony and appeal in their works. It's a bit like the grammar of the visual language. First up, we have primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. These are the building blocks of all other colors. They're like the parents in the color family. Next are secondary colors, green, orange, and purple. These are the children of the primary colors, born from a combination of two primary colors. Red and yellow make orange, blue and yellow give you green, and blue and red result in purple. Then we have tertiary colors, the grandchildren of the primary colors. These are the colors you get when you mix a primary color with a secondary color. You get colors like red-orange, yellow-green, and blue-violet. Now let's talk about complementary colors. These are colors that sit opposite each other on the color wheel. Think blue and orange, red and green, yellow and purple. They create a high contrast when placed next to each other, making each color appear more vibrant. It's a fantastic way to make certain elements of your artwork pop. But color is not just about aesthetics. It also plays a significant role in the emotional and psychological impact of your work. Warm colors like red, orange, and yellow can evoke feelings of warmth, comfort, and passion. On the other hand, cool colors like blue, green, and purple can create a sense of calm, tranquility, or even melancholy. But remember, the meaning of colors can vary based on cultural, personal, and situational contexts. So, it's essential to consider your audience and the message you want to convey when choosing colors. Mastering color theory allows artists to convey emotions more effectively and make their works more engaging. So go forth and paint your world with the understanding of colors. Did you know that the arrangement of elements in your artwork can make or break it? Composition, my friends, is the silent hero of art and design. It's the invisible hand that guides the viewer's eye through your work, connecting elements, building narratives, and evoking emotions. It's about how the elements of your artwork interact, balance, and relate to each other. Let's chat about one of the most famous compositional techniques, the rule of thirds. Imagine your artwork divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. The rule of thirds suggests that you position the most important elements in your scene along these lines or at the points where they intersect. This technique can create more tension, energy, and interest in your composition than simply centering the subject would. But rules, as they say, are made to be broken. The rule of thirds is not a one-size-fits-all solution, but rather a tool to help you think about your composition and how to arrange your elements to create a balanced and eye-catching design. 
and that brings us to the joy of experimentation. Each piece of art or design is a new opportunity to play with composition. Try different arrangements, break the rules, and see what works best for your unique vision. Experimenting with composition can lead to unexpected and exciting results. It can help you discover new ways of seeing and interpreting the world around you. In the end, the composition is more than just arranging elements on a page or canvas. It's about creating a visual journey, a journey that guides the viewer's eye, tells a story, and evokes emotions. It's about crafting a visual experience that connects with the viewer on a deeper level. So, whether you're painting a landscape, designing a poster, or creating a digital masterpiece, never underestimate the power of composition. Remember, a well-composed artwork can tell a story, evoke emotions, and guide the viewer's eye. Ever wondered how texture can add depth and realism to your artwork? Texture, the unsung hero of the art world, plays an essential role in the creation of captivating and immersive artwork. It's not just about what the eye sees, but what the mind perceives. You see, texture can create a visual illusion of what the surface might feel like, intensifying the viewer's connection with the artwork. The magic of texture is its ability to evoke specific feelings and reactions. Imagine a rough, craggy landscape. Doesn't it make you feel a sense of ruggedness, perhaps even a touch of adventure? Now picture a smooth, velvety petal of a rose. It's soothing, isn't it? That's the power of texture. It can shape the mood and tone of your artwork, adding another layer of depth and dimension. Now let's talk about how you can incorporate texture into your art. In traditional art, there are countless ways to create texture. From the type of brush you use to the way you apply the paint, each technique lends a unique texture. Impasto, for instance, involves applying thick layers of paint to create a textured three-dimensional effect. Dry brushing, on the other hand, uses a dry brush and minimal paint to create a scratchy, rough texture. In the realm of digital art, the possibilities are just as endless. You can use texture brushes, layer styles, and blending modes to mimic the look and feel of physical textures. Furthermore, you can create custom textures using photographs or scans. With the right blend of creativity and technical know-how, you can bring a tactile sense to your digital art. Remember, texture is a powerful tool. It can draw the viewer's eye, create visual interest, and even evoke emotional responses. However, it's not just about slapping on some texture, it's about using it strategically and thoughtfully to enhance the overall composition of your artwork. Texture, when used effectively, can bring your artwork to life. So, why not explore the world of texture and let it add a new dimension to your art? How often do you take a step back and critically assess your own work? This, my friends, is a question that holds immense value. It's a gateway to growth, to development, to becoming a better artist. Critique and self-reflection are two powerful tools in the artist's toolbox. They're not about pointing out flaws or weaknesses. Quite the contrary. They're about recognizing areas of improvement, understanding different perspectives, and pushing your creative boundaries. Let's talk about critique first. The art world is vast and diverse, filled with a multitude of styles, techniques, and perspectives. Each piece of art is a unique expression of its creator. Yet sometimes we might be too close to our work to see it objectively. This is where critique comes in. A well-rounded critique is not just about what's wrong or right with a piece. It's about understanding the artist's intent, the techniques used, and the overall impact of the work. When giving critique, be honest, be specific, and be constructive. And when receiving critique, approach it with an open mind. Remember, it's not a personal attack. It's a helping hand guiding you towards becoming a better artist. Now, on to self-reflection. This is your personal critique, your inner dialogue. It's about taking a step back and looking at your work from a distance. It's about asking yourself questions. What was your intent with the piece? Did you achieve it? What techniques did you use? Were they effective? Self-reflection gives you insight into your creative process, your strengths, and your areas of improvement. It's a constant learning process, one that encourages growth and development. Embrace critique and self-reflection. View them not as obstacles, but as stepping stones on your creative journey. Learn to give and receive critique constructively. Reflect on your work regularly. And most importantly, be open to learning and growing. In the journey of art, critique and self-reflection are your best guides. Embrace them and watch your art flourish.